traveling to consciousness, exploring spiritual journeys to find answers in uncertainty. What is up, Conscious Monkeys? Welcome back to an episode of Traveling to Consciousness. As always, I'm your host, Clay Kateri. And in today's podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you one of the most disturbing clips I think that I've ever heard. And in order for you to understand why and how this clip is, in fact, so disturbing, you need a little bit of background. So this clip that I'm about to play from you is from the voice of Larry Fink. If you don't know who that name is, he's the CEO of BlackRock. Now, if you know the name BlackRock, which I'm sure majority of you do because you're very aware, but if you're not, that's okay. I think I've talked about it before. Maybe I haven't. BlackRock is essentially a um, asset manager, and it's one of the world's largest. They have over $9 trillion in assets under management, and they hold significant stakes uh, in a vast array of American companies. And of the S&P 500, which is tremendous of the S&P 500 they have 80 to 80 percent of control of that market which is insane so they have a tremendous amount of global influence on corporate behaviors on economic behaviors on all of it they're usually the ones behind pulling the strings whenever you see a company make a ridiculous decision it's usually this company that's making that decision for them they don't really care about mid-level businesses they don't care about individual businesses they look at the whole thing as a they look at the economic landscape as a whole so that they can sway influence and that brings us to the clip that i want to play for you guys because it has to be one of the most anti-american anti-freedom quotes that I've ever heard. And remember, this guy, this guy that I'm playing this quote from, owns pretty much our economy. So here we are. Let me see if I can get a good quality of this. It's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change. And this is one thing we're going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted. Okay. We're doing the same. Thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting. It is development, as Ken said. And ultimately, it's still going to take time. But I am just as much shocked as Ken is that we have not seen more opportunities. And we're going to have to force change. Now, to me, I find that to be one of the most anti-American, anti-freedom idea I've ever heard in my entire life. Now, of course, as you could kind of hear in there, they're trying to blend that in with the idea of diversity, getting women involved. And of course, I think that's great. Race, women, whatever. You guys can get involved. I think that's very important, in fact. But you shouldn't force people to get in there. Right. The way that I'm hearing that is you have to force people to do things they don't want to do. You would have to force minorities. You have to force women to get in places that they don't want to be in. And is that the society we want to live in where we're forcing people to do things they don't want to do in the name of, well, I guess DEI, right? And so we can see that this is an agenda that's coming top down. This isn't a grassroots idea. This isn't an idea that we, the people desire. It's an idea that's being impressed upon us by the ruling class, by the elites of the world. And who's to say that this isn't going to be where they take it 
with everything. If you don't hire a certain number of people, I know, for example, right? And this is where all of this falls on its face. In the name of DEI, they have mandates for companies. We'll take an example, right? Let's say that you have a, um, I know this number off the top of my head because I have a uh, modeling company. And so I've looked into some of these numbers, but in the field of architecture, there's, if you're in the city of Pittsburgh, the field of architecture, there's only 10% of African Americans who are in the field of African, or I guess not technically African American, but black people who are in, who are architects. So if you're an architecture firm to meet the DEI requirements, it's something like 25% of your workforce needs to be black. How are you supposed to do that? Somebody help me understand how you're supposed to make that your workforce when only 10% are black. Does that mean that you actively can't hire more people? Because if you start expanding, say you have that 25%, you start expanding, you start growing, you're not going to be able to find the people. And so what I really think that we need to do as a country, as leadership, is to truly go after this concentration of power in unelected officials, if you will. I mean, first of all, our elected officials have too much power, but unelected officials having this much power is absolutely insane to me. Now, I don't know. Larry Fink could be a great guy. I'm sure if you become a CEO, you have to be at least some level of competence. So maybe, maybe it was a clip that was misunderstood. But whenever I sit here and I break down the tenets of what it means to be free, what it means to be an American, what it means to be able to prosper and live in the world, that quote, in my opinion, has no excuse for ever being uttered. And the only way that I can see it being uttered is if you, you truly are against the American dream, against letting people decide what they want for themselves. You have to force change. You have to force behaviors. Look, I think people are naturally beautiful and amazing people at heart. I, I just, I see that we've been corrupted. We've been corrupted by people like Larry Fink who sit here and say that we have to force people a certain way. I mean, and that force creates stress on your body, on your mind. You can't think straight, which then puts you into a state of fear. And I mean, compound that with all the poison and toxic chemicals that they're putting into our food. Even fruits are poison at this point. On top of this, we have other large corporations like um, Jeff. Is it Jeff Bezos or is it uh, Bill Gates? Bill Gates. It's Bill Gates creating the appeal, appell. I don't know what he's calling it now. But to literally put more chemicals on the outside of your fruits and vegetables that you can't clean off. So to me, I just find this to be such an egregious act of insanity. Insanity is the easiest way I can put it. And I don't know. He's in a position. Of, he has to be intelligent. Like, how does he not see that this is one of the most insane things that could ever be put forth? Because whenever a single company, a single person can exert this much influence over multiple sectors from corporate governance to the housing, it disrupts the individual's ability to be free, to be empowered. We have to stop pushing forth agendas that are going to cause more stress to people, more angst, more anxiety. We need people to be less stressed. And this comes through proper education. This comes from clean food. This clean comes from not having to worry about paying your bills. This is why, and I don't think I've talked about this recently, but this is why when I'm in the office, I'm going to present bills and legislation that reduces the cost of energy. Because that's another way they get you. Energy crisis. They can do, they can do energy crises where they'll increase the amount that your electricity costs or your heating. So we have to reduce these costs, reduce the cost of energy, reduce taxes, reduce the poison.
And people will feel so much healthier. Their mind, their body, their spirit. Where the world will just naturally thrive. Because look, the way that I've always, almost always seen it, I never really understood like, you know, sexism or racism. I'll be honest, like when I was a kid, I'm talking about when I was a kid, like 11 years old, 10 years old, it just didn't make sense to me. I didn't understand how you could like dislike someone for something they're born with, right? It, it, like it just didn't make sense to me. And so then the more I did research, personal research into like the people who were racist, who were sexist, who were um, against gays, against whatever, I realized very quickly that it just came from a place of ignorance. It came from a place of not understanding. Maybe it even came from a place of fear. So if you reduce all of these levers that are in pressures that are creating fear within our society, to me, it'll just naturally disappear. I can honestly see it just like floating off in the distance, like pixie dust, if you will. Because to me, it's just ignorance and fear. So if we eliminate the things that we're afraid of, such as bills, such as people like Larry Fink, <laughs> and I don't, to clarify, I don't mean eliminate physically, I just mean eliminate his ability to force behaviors and force you to do things you don't want to do. You don't force people to do stuff. It's going to have a, it, it does the exact opposite. Please. He's what? He's probably 60 some years old. I'm, I'm 30. I've only lived 30 years of life. And I know that forcing people to do something has the exact opposite reaction. Have you ever tried to push together the opposite ends of a magnet? And they just push further apart. So instead, we, we have to reduce the fear in our society because there's a lot of fear. And when you live in a place of fear, you see scarcity, you see the lack of opportunity. And even more so, you start blaming, right? It creates division. It creates division in society. And we are at such a crucial point in our, quite frankly, if I look at it in terms of human evolution, in terms of human evolution, but even just as a country, as a nation, we're at such an influx point of really trying to get this on the right track. And all of these decisions of fear, of scarcity, it's, it's pushing us in the opposite direction. We have to focus on things that we all benefit from. Black, white, yellow, red, whatever color your skin is green i don't know maybe there's a green person out there listening to this to me we have to make decisions that bring us all together that unify us that let us know that hey we are far more similar than we are different and people like Larry Fink, and you know, I'm not even just trying to call him out. I think there's plenty of people who push these agendas, and and again, maybe at their heart they truly believe what they're saying. You know, like I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe in their heart they truly think that this is what's going to bring prosperity, and maybe they're perfect examples of how our education system has completely failed everyone, because here they are in positions of leadership, and it's obviously it's in my eyes like i i've not seen any evidence to support that there might be a ounce of validity in the world that they're trying to create i mean i guess it could be valid but it's not going to actually create peace and prosperity and harmony for all of us like and i like i don't know like i i haven't seen whether you want to look at it logically whether you want to look at it emotionally whether you want to look at it from, quite frankly, any angle you can look at it. This is not going to create a world of peace and prosperity and harmony. And I can definitely say that for majority of political, political uh, people, if you will, politicians, bureaucrats, to me, that's not their central aim. 
and maybe that's what it is. Maybe in their heart, they, they truly, their, their aim is not towards peace and harmony and balance. And maybe that's where I'm missing it. And maybe that's what they're hiding. I don't know. But that does come, that even brings us back to the whole lying thing is like, just say what you mean. I feel like we have been in this situation of politicians, of reporters, of CEOs, where they don't truly just come out and say what they mean. You always kind of have to be like, well, do you really mean that? And like, what's the agenda going on here? And like, uh, like, I'll be happy to just say what I truly mean. And if you're listening to this, and maybe this is even a good test point, is you could just feel that energy of authenticity and it can guide you. Hopefully, this energy of authenticity that I'm putting out can guide you to see who in the world is truly being authentic. And maybe that's where another part of my... Detestment? Detestment doesn't seem like a word, nor the right word. My vitriol? Vitriol seems a little too strong. But maybe that's where I'm missing the mark, is that maybe they're just corrupted from a heart space, and they don't know how to fix it. They don't know how to put themselves on the right path. Maybe they don't know. So hopefully, hopefully they hear this, they hear these ideas, these messages, and it pushes them onto the right path. Because it's going to lead to a tremendous amount of turmoil if they don't get on the right path. But I, I don't know, even saying that, it seems like there's a lot of effort and I think that the the human spirit is so much more powerful than this this vitriol that they're putting out into the world it seems like people see it everything's been kind of cushy and good and you don't really need to worry about it but now we're 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 pulling back the layers we're realizing that even the scientists are lying about lying about information to us because they're getting paid off by food and drug administrations and they're getting paid off by these companies to to create the data that they want to create so i think we're starting to see it i think the whole charade is starting to fall apart and i just hope i hope cuz i mean look it would be great like honestly i think it would be excellent for people in leadership people in power to just do all these things I'm saying now I, because then I no longer have to run for Congress. I'll figure out something else to do with my life. I think that would be ideal. I think that'd be ideal. I'd be totally cool with that. But the problem is, is I don't see it happening anywhere. No one is leading with their heart. And if they are, their heart is being misguided by whether it's ego, whether it's power and to me, it just, it's not right. The American people deserve better. We deserve better. We deserve our leadership looking for the best, our best interest, our future, our kids' future. And I don't see that. I see children with nuclear weapons aiming them at each other, trying to convince us that we dislike somebody else. I've been to, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 countries at this point. Everyone's amazing in every country. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to South Asia. I've been to Europe. I've been to South America. I've been to Central America. I've been to almost every region of the world. And every single place, the people are absolutely amazing. Amazing. Just amazing people. So it does not make sense to me that we must continue in this direction. It's not what the citizens of the world desire. It seems to me that it is only the leaders who desire this treacherous outcome. And for some reason they decide to, you know, 
in the media play these games of divisiveness and hatred, but then they show up at these G8, G20, these, you know, NAFTA, NATO conferences, and then they're best friends. And it's like none of that stuff in the media ever happened. It seems to me like it's the biggest movie, the biggest drama being played out on the world stage. But yet the cost is our lives, your life, the life of your children, the future. And man, there's one thing that I was taught as a kid was always to leave a room better than the way you found it. And I just look at the people in charge and I just have to feel as if they were never taught that lesson by their mother. So that's something that I think everyone can do. Maybe you're not looking to get involved in the campaign at this point. Maybe you're not trying to do something crazy in the world. And I think that's quite all right. And I think it's, there's a lot to take care of, but see if you can, every room you walk into, just leave it one little bit better than the way you found it. Whether it's picking something up, whether it's cleaning something, I don't know. But if you can leave it just one little bit better, it becomes a snowball effect. If you leave 1% better of 1% of 1% of 1%, it starts to go exponential. It becomes very, very powerful. So that's your assignment for today, for this, for today. <laughs> leave every room you walk into 1% better. And if you got anything from this podcast, please share it. Please share it because we definitely need more enlightened spiritual souls having these conversations. Conversations. We need more people to understand what's going on in the world and how our leadership has absolutely failed us in so many ways. So many ways. Even more. There's so many ways that I can't even fit into a podcast every so often. Every single way. It's 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 truly heartbreaking. So please leave a review, please, and thank you for being who you are. Please share this with one other person. That would be my one request to you. And leave your rooms 1% better. So 1% better and share this with one other person. I think that would be the, the perfect sign off. And with all that being said, I appreciate all you guys. Thanks for listening to me and the future that I guess I'm hoping I see in the world one day. With all that being said, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And if I don't see you guys in this dimension, then I know I'll see you in the sixth dimension.